In this tutorial, we are going to consider how to bring data from multiple sources together into one file. If you start it with us in the reading in file, we have been working with a data set from Fray Vincente Bernardo. And so this specific data set has students answering a survey that has 22 questions. It has their grade level, their gender, their student name, and an identifier given by the school. The first row represents the school they're from. The second row represents the grade and class, which is also represented on the tab. And we can see that we have not one, not two, but three different classes, all of whom have taken this 22 question survey. Our goal is to be able to put these together cleanly in a way that will combine these and maybe in future combine others. So instead of trying to copy paste this data and put one on top of the other, I'm going to show you how to fluidly do this in Alteryx. When we put data together or aggregate data, there are several different ways that we might want the data to be combined. If this was the 22 question survey, and then later, maybe I wanted to put the grades that they had in a class. And after that, I might want to include things like demographics in the student, then I would be using the same student across several different fields, which is actually called a join. And that's when data goes left to right and is connected on one specific feature. In our case, we have four different classes with the same information. And we basically want one to go on top of the other to go on top of the other. Think of working at a business and every month having a report that's generated that has the same headers that we want combined so that we can come up with patterns and information that's happening over time. If that's the case, then instead of left and right pulling the data together, we'll actually be adding data basically underneath of the previous data set or up and down. That is actually called union not join. And so when we look at all tricks, we have the first class 4A. We had also in our last tutorial read in 4B. But if you recall from the data set, there's actually three data sets. There's two classes of four and there's one class of five. So I'm going to read it in one more time so that we also have class 5A. Hopefully you keep your data better than I do, I apologize. So I bring 5A in, I click OK. And then again, this is a Microsoft Excel SX file. We have grade five, class A, and school name and class, we don't actually want included here. We wanna start our data on row three, because that's where we actually have headers that make sense and refresh it, and I'm gonna run. Now, when I run it, it'll pull that specific data set in here, so that if I click on the right-hand side, you can see <clears throat> the student's number, student, gender, level, question one, two, three. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to take this class across the top, this class, which has the same headers, and this class. And I'd like to join them so they become one huge file. And as I said, when it's left and right, it's going to be called a <coughs> join. When it's up and down, it's going to be called a union. So I'm going to pull in my union. I'll bring in class 4A, I'll bring in class 4B, I'll bring in class 5A. So I'm saying take each one of these and compile them on top of each other. If I want to change the order, anything you want to play with gets played within the configuration file. So if I actually want it fifth grade first, I can take this and move it up. Now the one that I brought in for the fifth graders will be first. If I want to change my ordering, it can happen here, just so you know. All right, so notice on the left-hand side, I've joined it, but on the right-hand side, when I click this, I've got nothing. It's because I haven't actually asked it to come to compute what I've asked it to do. So I'm gonna click on the run file. It's gonna take about you know, 0.7 seconds. And when I do that, you'll see on the right-hand side that it pulled all of the data together. So I have one of the classes, a second class. Now, how do I know I've gotten to a second class? Is this ended at student 38 and started at student one again? And it turns out that in one of these classes, someone might have clicked in the Excel file somewhere and typed something or hit enter. And so it thinks that some of these rows need to be included, which are completely empty. And then we have our third class down here. Now notice this student might have a blank, but it's not the entire row that's blank, it's just an answer that's blank. But here I have entire rows of data that have been pulled in that maybe don't belong there. 
And if I go to the right, it seems to also have happened here. There might be some columns of data that don't belong there. So if I want to quickly get rid of really mistakes or nuances that don't belong in my data, I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to choose the data cleaning tool. Now I bring the data cleaning tool in after the union and it will give me some options. And so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna remove any rows that are completely null and I wanna remove any columns that are completely null. Now, I don't wanna replace anything right now with a value. I do wanna get rid of any leading and trailing spaces. Sometimes when you type something in Excel, you hit like the space bar before you hit enter, you get a white space there that maybe you don't know is there. So this will get rid of any of those. And notice I currently had 33 students, but yellow told me some of these were blank. By the way, if you look here, I have 38 students, it's completely green, which means 100% of them filled this out, 100% of them filled this out, 100% of the 38 filled this out. This is a pretty clean data source. This one has 28, they're 100% filled out. But this one has 33, and you can see that really, um, I have, this is where my blanks are coming in. The computer's trying to tell you that. And so when I join them, they did come together, but now when I clean them, I'm gonna make those blank spaces go away. And so if I click run, you can see that before I did it, that's a little green arrow before, I had 99 students and I had some that were missing. If I hover over, about 8% of the data was missing. If I click on the right hand side, I can see that I went down to 91 records. So I got rid of those eight students. I have mostly entirely green here, telling me that I now have a cleaner union data set that represents all three sheets. Hopefully this helps you to get a little bit more familiar with joining and unioning, or at least the concepts, and shows you how to do some very basic data cleaning.